everyone, it's Carolyn. All right, today we're going to talk about the child in you. Now, I'm going to reference back to the December energy update, which I recently put out. If you haven't listened to that, you might want to do that first. You don't have to, but it will give some frame of reference of maybe to why I'm doing the video I'm doing. Because this is actually an exercise I'm going to give you that has been very profound for me over the course of my journey and also now has come back to me for this month of December to really rethink, um, which I've recently done and I'm going to share the results with you, rethink things for the coming new year. Now, if you remember, if you've listened to the December Energy Update, this is about shoring up our foundation. And the thing is, with this awakening journey that we are on, this is all about coming back to self, coming back to our authentic self, right? Now, of course, there are many other parts of this uh, full-on awakening ascension journey, but the most important thing is coming back into ourself, understanding the definition of who we are and reclaiming lost parts of us and discovering that and going through the um, awarenesses of, of how we potentially have lost that authenticity or we have um, through the difficulties in our journey we have shut certain things down. Now that can happen very much with the inner child and we're not going to talk about that part today so much um, where like traumas and situations from our early days have caused us to be a certain way in adulthood and that the child is looking to you to you know, hello, I'm here, let's work on these things. This is a little different. This is the relationship that your child, which is a part of you, has to the adult in you. And and, and, and really looking to have that conversation and reclaim some of that beauty of childhood. And I'm going to give you my examples today, so I hope it frames it up for you, so you can use this exercise for yourself. And th what I would say with this exercise that I'll explain to you in a second is take some time to do this. Don't just cursorily, you know, think through it. Take some time to actually go through this process, not necessarily like a one and done kind of situation, kind of come back and revisit it. It's really powerful. It'll help you reclaim what I'll just say is a lot of the innocence, the creativity, the um, playfulness, the beauty that we bring in as children and that often gets squashed and lots of times gets squashed by us moving into the adult conformist society that we've had. Okay, It also may help you understand how to help your children as they move forward in their journey. But right now what we're talking about is what you can do to have that conversation with the child in you who is a part of you, a very big part of you, um, and how you can use that information to help you move forward into the new year. Because remember, again, as I say, we're showing up our foundation, we're really getting ready to move into the expansion of creativity, and the child has a lot to do with that. So to one degree or another, uh, I think this will help you, and I hope you enjoy the exercise because it's been really powerful for me. So I'm going to start with really asking you, have you talked to the child in you lately? Or have you long ago abandoned the child, and the, I will also say the childlike ways, the things the child loves, for the adult world that says that's all nonsense, imagination, fantasy, you can't play forever kind of thing. So... What I'm going to do today is give you this exercise that will assist you in understanding a bit more about what your child is saying. So again, this is about you, the adult you, and the child in you, the child that you were in this lifetime, okay? And not what others might have assisted in creating for you. Now, there is an overlap, I will say, but what we're trying to do is understand how did we as we grew, abandon the child in us. So the very first thing, and I'm gonna give you my examples as we go along in the steps. So I'm gonna give you examples of my journey in each of these steps. So, so the first thing that I did, and I'm gonna ask you to do if you'd like to work on this exercise, is think of your child as being in a room. 
Okay, what does that room look like, first of all? So you open up the door, you walk in, and there's your child, the child you were. And remember, this is the relationship between you, adult you, and your child, all right? And a lot of times we can, you know, bring in other parties that caused us the things that created kind of who we are in adulthood. But I really want you to try to look at how you, as the adult, have treated your inner child. Okay, your child. So the first thing is set that room up. Okay, what's that room look like? And you can do this in meditation, whatever works for you. In a quiet time, in a quiet space, you can close your eyes. If you don't meditate, you can do this in just sitting and imagining. Remember, this is you're, 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 you're visualizing this. We can all visualize to one degree or another, all right? And you may, during this exercise, receive words, full-on conversation. Some of you I know do receive conversation. Um, you may receive visuals. You might receive feelings that you'll then interpret. So I'm gonna use the way it works for me, but you're gonna find your own way. So you've set the room up. You walk in and, and like, what's the room look like as the child that you were? And I don't mean your bedroom. What's the room look like? What was that child's journey like? What was it like for you as a child? So what you're doing is you're really going back into being that child, but you're walking in that room. Where is the child sitting in the room? Here's a good example. If we full on abandoned our child in us, the things that that child wants and desires from the adult, the connecting in, not the oh, I grew up and I'm now I'm the adult and the child went away. This is about rejoining that child. What's that child got to say to you in how they are positioned in the room? For example, is your child sitting with its back to you as you walk in, faced into a corner? Uh, what's a child's face look like? What's your, child's, what's your child's face look like when it sees you enter the room? as the adult? Is there conversation? Is there a frowny look on the face? Is there joyful laughter and thrilled to see you? Which, you know, all these mean different things. So that's what you want to do first, is really get a sense of where's the child at in the room and what's the reaction to you as the adult coming in the room. Now, what I will tell you is when I did this exercise, and I'm going to do it again, this is something you can keep doing, because what you're doing is you're reforming a relationship with your child, all right? Because remember, that child is still out there. That child is there, right? You are just in this moment now of being this adult, but that child is still there. So you can you can reconnect in with that part of you. So when I did this exercise, I walked into my room that I created and my room was full of just fun things, like exploring kinds of things, fun things, creative things, imaginative things, but my little girl was sitting in the corner looking at me with just exasperation on her face. Just kind of like, it was almost like, um, oh, oh, you're here? And a little, like, like I said, exasperation, frustra uh, not so much frustration, but almost like they didn't know who I was. Okay, that's probably the best way to explain it. They didn't know who I was. So this is, remember, this is important. You might also want to take some notes as you go along, or you could record it, whatever works for you. Um, but you might want to try to remember what this looks like. Or if you draw, wow, wouldn't that be great, right? Um, while you're doing this exercise. So you walk into the room and you, you're you setting up that environment. You're getting, you're not really setting up there, but you're getting a sense of the environment because the, vi the environment is, uh, being presented to you as the adult, right? And most importantly, what does that child, the you as the child, what's the expression? What are the actions even? So my child, she was sitting down. There was not any movement. There was just this look of, oh, you remember me? Okay, so we're gonna move on. So you're gonna do that and get a sense of that because you're gonna visit that room um, as you come back into this exercise over time, if you choose to do that. So at this point, 
what I want you to do is converse with your child. Okay, write this down. I would write this down, but you, if you get into a flow, it's kind of hard to do. You could also, like I said, record it, but start talking. Start creating a conversation. What does little you have to say about the things that are between the two of you? How the adult has treated the child. And when I say that, I'm talking about the childlike ways, the things the child enjoyed that potentially were completely abandoned as we went into adulthood. Because remember, children bring in such innocence, such purity, such creativity, such imagination, fantasy, all of these things. And we have, as adults, historically said, oh, that's silliness, that's childlike. That's time to put away those games. It's time to put away those childlike ways. When in reality, we should be taking that big part of us forward to create our adult life. We don't want to lose that. But most of us have to one degree or another. And that's what we're here today to do, to look and see where's the chasm, where's the gap? What are the things that really that child is saying, I want to be a part of your journey. So I'm going to ask you to identify in this exercise one thing to take forward into the new year where you will bring that child with you. You will bring back those things or that thing that you desire. You can bring back more than one that you desired to do all the time in your journey as a child. And then all of a sudden it was extinguished for one reason or another. And we're going to journey through that as well. Okay. So you're going to have that conversation. This is not a one and done. You may come back and say, okay, I, I've learned some things. I need to go back. I need to go. Oh, I got chills. Okay. Yeah. They, okay. They just said, um, oh, wow. I have chills. They just said, if you've abandoned your child for a long time, like I did, which I'll tell you about here in a minute, um, it may take some warming up. That child might not talk the first time. That child might just look at you and go about their business. Mm -hmm. So this is not a one and done. This is a process that you can use over time. Over the rest of your journey, in fact. Because you're going to continue to uncover layers. But what I'm asking is for you to go through this process so that you have one thing to take forward into the new year. And when we say new year, it doesn't have to be January 1. <laughs> January would be good, right? Um, so again, this is shoring up your foundation, helping you move forward to become the, the oneness of you. The oneness of you. Because we tend to think the adult in us, the who we are now, right? Whatever age it is we're now. No, we're bringing all the parts of us back in. The soul frame is parts of us. The, the child. And today we're talking about how you bring the child back into you. All right? So you're having that conversation. Understand where you're at in that conversation. Okay? So in my conversation, what, and I'm just starting this, by the way. Okay? Um, so in my conversation, I took some warming up to do. Like there was just a blank stare. Like, huh. Okay, so after you start this conversation. Start having conversation or visualizing and remembering and putting the adult you inside the child. Be the child again. Go back in your mind and start remembering the things of beauty that you loved, the, the things that are in your memories that you loved doing, being, seeing, um, adventuring, what is it you loved? Now again, I, what can happen in this exercise is, you know, a lot of us have had difficult upbringings, but in this exercise, that may have had an influence, but we're not talking about that individual and their influence and what had happened in the adult life. It, it will potentially have an impact on you, but at the same time, your child knew, and I know you're going to know this, the things you loved and you enjoyed. Forget what happened to it from another person. What happened to it with you then moving forward? Did you have, did you take the opportunity to reclaim it because someone else had shut it down or did you just abandon it all together? That's where we're coming from here. Okay. So what I really want you to spend time on now that you've connected in with the child, you've, um, you've joined in and become your child again. I want you to go back in time. And it doesn't have to be a linear approach to this. I want you to think about the moments that stand out in your mind of the things you love to do, 
how you spent your time, what brought you joy, what brought you magic, what brought you creativity, what brought you imagination, what brought you complete joy as a child. What were the things you remember? And I want you to really engage in that, not just cursorily identify it and write it down. Feel what that was like. Um, if you're, if you're, for example, clairsentient, you can feel things, you can go right back into that moment. And I'll give you an example for me. So uh, my conversation essentially was that I lost play primarily. I have some other things I'll share with you and I'll share my journey here in a minute that I lost the idea of how to play. Okay. So what I chose to do and, and play for me is really different. It, it, it looked different for everyone. Um, if play is one of those things that, that we've abandoned along the way. Um, so as I went and had that conversation with my child, it's like, you don't play anymore. That's why this room that I was in was full of fun things, like things I used to do as a child. And all of a sudden I went back into that room and I talked to her and she's not real happy with me. She's just like, oh, 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 it's you. I'm doing my things, the things I love. So part of that was nature for me. I remember, this is the first memory I had when I, when I went and had the conversation with my child and really you know, became her again. And you might not be ready to become her in the first exercise, the first go around of the exercise, but when I became her again, I remembered clovers, finding four leaf clovers. I remember, this is the first memory, lying on my stomach in our yard or um, down about two blocks from the middle school and going into the football field and lying on the ground and looking for four leaf clovers. That detailed, looking at, for four leaf clovers and picking them. And we used to find four leaf clovers back then. I have no idea now if four leaf clovers even exist. I don't even see clovers, clover anymore in the sense of the three leaf or four leaf because guess what? I lost the whole approach to understanding detail, seeing detail, seeing the beauty in the minute. And I'll talk about how I've reclaimed some of this too, but so getting down, seeing clover, getting close to things, getting close to nature. The other thing that, and this is so bizarre, but it all ties together. The other thing was I knew every crack in the sidewalk in my neighborhood. I knew where the bumps were. And I, I remember seeing these right now. I even remember patched holes of cement in the sidewalk. Because guess what? I was outdoors all the time. I was outdoors constantly. Of course, in the summertime, and then otherwise we're going to school. But then afterwards, outdoors, even in winter. But I remember the summer times where I would be on my bike all the time and or going down to the uh, neighbor kid's house because we had quite a neighborhood of about a street of about four blocks of just kids that had got together and had a lot of fun. And that was back in the day when we, <laughs> we did that, right? It was like a free range childhood, um, which I definitely had. Um, so I knew the detail of the sidewalk. I knew where the cracks were. I knew what my bike felt like going over it. I mean, it's amazing to even think about that now. Again, detail, seeing detail being in the now moment of the thing in front of you, right? Children do that. Children are focused on the now moment. They're not thinking about the past and they're also not planning for the future. Oh my gosh, there's something for me to take note of. How does that affect me in my adult life, right? Well, how it affects me in my adult life is, well, I have, we've all had to kind of do this, learn how to come back into the now moment. So use the child as the example of being able to really be in that beautiful now moment. That's where all that joy is coming from, from them, right? They're seeing the moment when the thing they're engaged in, they're happy with and they're having a good time. Or they take the time to see the little things, right? Take the time. And those little things just thrill them, right? They can get excited about the, the smallest things like clove four leaf clovers, right? So one of the things that I identified was that I have lost the ability, not fully, but for a, a big part of my journey, because I have a lot of years between childhood and now, and now I'm just starting to reclaim this. So how can we build this back into our current life and how can it serve us? So for me, understanding the detail, looking at the detail, seeing the beauty in the small things, this is what I've started to do. Now, mind you, I started doing this, it's almost like it naturally happened 
when I started taking walks instead of feeling like I always had to achieve something. So that's an issue for me is I've always felt like I, in doing something there has to be a purpose and I have to achieve. Well, guess what? The child's not thinking about that. Your child's not thinking about that. My child wasn't thinking of that. They're just enjoying what they're doing. They're just doing to do, right? Nope, I lost that because I ended up going into the business world, not that that's the issue, but entering adult life and saying, okay, everything has to have a purpose. I must have a trajectory. Now, I can sit here and say all day long, yep, there was outside influences on that, because there are, they're social, they're familial, you gotta do the thing and you gotta achieve. But we have choices, right, as adults. It's like being aware, look what I just lost, and I wanna reclaim that. How do I incorporate that back into my life? So for me, Naturally, what started to happen, I started taking walks instead of feeling like I had to run three miles a day, which I used to do for 20 years, three miles a day. Now I walk. Uh, I still work out. Yep. I still like to like have a good sweat. But now I look at the detail and I see one of the big things is the difference in the barks of the tree. You may think, well, that's, what's the deal with that? <laughs> but why does that matter? It does matter because it helps us start to see that detail again. So for me, I had lost that ability to see that to understand the beauty in these small things. Now I stop, I look at the wildflowers coming up, I study the, you know, seeing mushrooms come up that I never would have noticed before because guess what, I was always in my head. So now I'm coming back into that childlike part of me, the being in the now moment, seeing the beauty in the things that we are passing by. Because the child is not in their head. Our child is enjoying this moment, the thing that is in front of them. If I can take anything away. It's understanding that and reincorporating that back into seeing the detail, seeing the beauty. Gardening for me has been so helpful, seeing little things. And this year was the first year that I wasn't really like focused on, wow, I got to get this ready and done and I need to achieve the garden that I want. No, it was about the process. Again, back to the child. It was about the process, the every moment of the thing that I'm doing, being able to enjoy that without this, these outside distractions of, of feeling like I have to achieve something or thinking about the past, thinking about the future. So that's one of the things. The other things too that I have noticed is, as I mentioned, detail. And this has to do with, again, one of my categories is I've lost seeing detail. Clouds. I used to lie on my back, I remember this, in our yards, and actually it was more with friends. I remember lying um, on my back on like a field. It was like, because I grew up in Iowa and some of my friends, their families had some property, and we would just go lay in the field and, I, and we would look at the clouds. And we would talk about what the clouds looked like. We would just look at the clouds and enjoy the sun. And I'm like, oh my gosh, when was the last time I did that? However, what's interesting is that child's been poking at me because I have a tendency to be one of those that where I'm on the tennis court playing, thank heavens my partner's like this, we'll just kind of go like this and go, oh wow, isn't that beautiful? That child wants me to do more of that. That child's still there in that respect, right? The beauty of the clouds, maybe just take some time and go out and just lie there and look at the clouds. Again, really getting that understanding of that detail again. Sidewalk cracks, I talked about that. Treasures, I used to find treasures because we lived on the Mississippi River Bluffs and there were these old roads on our on our bluff that we grew up on and we overlooked the Mississippi essentially and we would go just explore as kids. We would walk that old road, we'd be out in the woods and we would find these old antique bottles. We'd find just old antique things because of course this used to be a road back in the 1800s and early 19, probably early 1900s um, as well. And they tossed stuff out then and we would explore, we would find cool things. And so again, detail, detail, detail. So my child is saying to me, you're missing all that. You've been missing that your entire adult life. Look how much you haven't seen. Bringing me back into the now moment. So that's one thing I am taking forward and I'm going to do even more of this, but I've done a really good job of this. Without even going through this exercise, mind you, you may find that some of this has just come back to you naturally, but this is a really conscious way of doing this exercise so you have something to take forward. Because sometimes we do have to uncover this, right? So I'm really happy that the adult me all these years later has realized, oh wow, I'm naturally coming back into noticing the beautiful small things in my journey, which also helps me be in the now moment and out of my head, okay? 
So another category for me, as I'm having this conversation with my, my child, and I'm seeing what they're showing me in that room we're in, or you can put the room outdoors, right? So they're showing me also all their creativity. This room is full of things they created. So I started going back into my childhood and I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And so this, these things will pop out as you become your child again, okay? So my mom set us up with a lot of crafty stuff. Like we were always creating something. And this is this is going to date me, <laughs> but some of you might remember um, things like creepy crawlers, um, dippity glass. Um, I'm trying to think what else. There's all these kinds of things you can make with like little heat machines. Um, we also did I, a, a lot of art, um, a, a lot of reading of fiction as well. I'm going to come back to that. Um, so a lot of art, illustrated stories I would do. I would draw and paint. I would write these stories in what were in my imagination and from some of the books that I read and what I would create from that imagination and then I, I would write it and illustrate it. And so I had these little stories I would write. Also, the other thing, I love dolls. And it's so funny because I don't have children now. You would kind of think that would lead to like, oh, why didn't you have children? Nope, didn't happen for me. <laughs> anyway, needless to say, I had a lot of dolls and I remember, some of you might remember little kittles. Okay, so these teeny, teeny little dolls that um, had houses and whatnot. Oh, I had names for everybody. I used to make them clothes. I had stories about each one of them and who they were, and I think they came with little stories. But anyway, I cre created a family. I created a whole community. Again, creating stories, creativity, all of that part is creativity. So now we got detail, okay? I've lost the detail in my adult life, and my child is saying, look at here. Creativity, that was the big one. The room just showed that. All these things I would used to, I was used to creating as a child. Well, I will tell you one thing, and this is, this is why this exercise has been so powerful, is I actually identified some time ago in my early awakening journey, because I came out of the cloud of dozens of years in corporate America, of where it's kind of, it's kind of a, um, how do I want to say this? I mean, it really, it served me, and there were other reasons for me doing what I did, but at the same time, what I noticed is in the field I was in, and maybe some of the companies I worked for, you know, you get kind of put a little bit in a box. Your creativity can't expand out as much as maybe you want it to, as if, say, you know, when you were a child and you're able to do all those things, or even if you're like an entrepreneur, because right? So the creativity part was something that I realized not too many years ago that, oh my God, I've lost my creativity. Now, we never really lose it, it's just hidden, which is why we're doing this exercise, right? And again, I honestly didn't know how to do those things, create stories anymore, to be able to imagine. So one of the biggest signs that I had in my awakening journey was the word imagination that came up. And this is when I was just starting to learn about signs and messages. And so I started to tra track all of these. Imagination was huge. It was absolutely huge, it kept coming out for me. Well, here we are, you know, my child saying to me, creativity. And, and creativity relies on imagination, right? And so one of the things that I have, again, now started to do is I'm reading fiction. Never in a million years would I read fiction. Now, mind you, as a child, this is another thing. I would read a lot. My mom always took us to the libraries in the summertime, and we would summertime reading at the library, and it was magical. We'd have books and books and books. So I became an avid reader. I loved reading. No, not as an adult, because guess what? I worked all the time. Now, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but for the most part, my life was work. I was on that trajectory for many, 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 many years. And when I would read, it would be seldom I would complete a book. Um, and here's the bigger part, and this is what the child's saying to me. I always read nonfiction because up until just a few years ago, what I would actually say is, oh, I really want to learn something I, that is applicable um, if I'm going to read. I want it to have purpose and meaning. As though fiction didn't, but that's how I felt. I was like, no, everything has, to, you know, here's where we're going, right? And this is gonna help you too. You're gonna get to this understanding of like, what is this really telling me? Well, one of the big things I realized is I always was like, everything I do has to have a purpose, like an outcome, a purpose, 
a goal. No. What if it's just to read fiction and use your imagination and have a beautiful story? So I literally, I know this sounds, I mean, even as I'm saying it, I'm sounding like this seems so improbable. I could go this many years and just now realize this. But this is what the awakening does. And as we start to explore our child part of us, remember, we're reclaiming all the pieces of us to become the oneness of who we are and to bring back the things that we had as a child into our adult journey that will serve us moving forward. So I just got done reading a book of fiction that, you know, it was okay. And I kept going because it was my first book, but it was the best book to read, even though the storyline wasn't that exciting. It was about strangers who came together to, and ended up celebrating the holidays together and moving on in their journey, kind of together, but then separate too. But they were strangers and they got pulled together in this book in a London town. And I had to create the visualization of the town, of the people, of the experiences, what they each looked like, what their clothing looked like. And this author, perfect one for me to start exploring this with, was able to describe so well that where I could then put the other pieces together and frame it up. It was magical. Even though I wouldn't recommend the book, oh my gosh, for me, first time like reimagining, getting my imagination going, because here's the other thing. And we're not going into this today, but imagination plays a huge part in being able to create in our adult journey and to manifest, okay? So keep that in mind. So anyway, I now have detail as one of the big things. I now have creativity as one of the big things. My child is saying to me. Okay, we have a third one. Play. Guess who, and I've said this before, and it's so interesting. I've said this before, I don't know how to play. Like I've been confronted with this where, like I wanna go do something fun and I'm like, but I don't know what that would be. But I wanna do goofy fun things, but what would that be? I mean, I literally, what would that be? Now, I will admit, I think those of you who have had children and grown up with children, you are more likely to be able to engage in play and know what play is because I find myself when I'm around little kids, like I just all of a sudden get enamored with their toys <laughs> and I get enamored with what they're doing and what they enjoy and I just want to play all day long. I want to do the playful thing, right? And their, their toys and their games and all of that. Um, but I have I've very much lost the idea of play. This all lines up with, and again, this will help, I, hopefully my examples are helping you relate into this conversation with you, the things you'll take away from your child. So play for me was what I did as a child um, I was outdoors like most of the time. I grew up in the era where we just were went out the back door or front door, slammed the screen door, and we were gone for the day. It was awesome. It was such a wonderful thing. We would take our bikes, and I would literally, I still to this day, I'm kind of go like, oh my gosh. I was like in fourth and fifth grade, and what we did a lot of was we were on the north side of town, my friends, I me, mean, we grew up on the north side of town. We would take our bikes all day long, go all the way over to the south side of town, which honestly, on a bike ride would probably take about an hour, I would say, to get to the other side of town where all the parks were. We would spend the day, we would take a picnic lunch. Yes, we did, really. I mean, I'm thinking about this now. This is a great video because it's helping me remember too. And then we would come back, but we would explore, we would have fun, we would do all kinds of things. We would bike all over town and then we would come back. And I just remember being outdoors all the time and being able to know how to play and particularly be outdoors, all right? Now, the other part too is the spontaneity of just what play was. We would play games. We would play kick the can. We would play, I don't know if you guys know that game, um, depending on what era you grew up in. Kick the can, uh, what a Red Rover. Um, I'm trying to remember. We used to play softball games, tetherball. I, it goes on and on. We're very sporty, okay? So I will say, the play for me, and this is interesting what happened, play for me became something to achieve within that play. So remember, this is all part of this learning of me doing this exercise, but more formally and going, okay, here's where I'm at in adulthood. Oh yeah, this came back in. Okay, I'm doing pretty good with this, but wow, she's really saying these are my categories and giving me a lot of detail. So outdoors, nature, spontaneity of just being able to go to the neighborhood kids place and go play and not having a big plan, right? Not having a big plan of what we're going to do for that day. Fortunately, I 
have always kept the I want to be outdoors thing, okay? However, a lot of that has been overcome with the idea of not having enough time. Um, and so here we go again. Just since my awakening, I've started hiking. I never hiked at all, ever in my adult life. Again, I was on this career tra trajectory um, and the idea that that was part of play for me had long been lost. So I hike now, and that and that also brings in the detail, okay? That detail category. So I have the detail category, the creativity category, and I have the play category, which I still am not great at. I'm not great at play. You, know, you might not think that like being outdoors and hiking is play, because honestly, it's kind of not, right? Like, what does play really mean? How can I be silly and fun and goofy? And so I've started <laughs> incorporating some of the more goofy parts of me in my morning, um, and that's just kind of who I am, um, and I just need to express more of that and just let that be. But but the point is, is play for me is a big issue right now. I don't even really know what more to say about it. I don't quite know how to play because honestly, my child did. We I knew how to play, and I again, I'm just on this journey now as well, so I'm still unraveling some of these things. Okay, so we have the play category, the creativity category, the detail. You're going to get categories, but what you're going to get first is the you're going to see, like, when you go back into your childhood and you see you doing things, you're going to be like, oh, God, I love that. I love that. I love this. Like, really looking to what you love doing. What stands out? What memories stand out? And then what you're going to do, take your notes, right, or however you want to do that, and you're going to be able to categorize, just like I did. Uh, detail, creativity, play. And I have one more category to share, and then we're going to wrap this up for you so you can take this forward in your journey and use it. I highly recommend it. It's quiet time. So I grew up in a family with a sister and two parents. Um, I had a lot of alone time. I also am a more quiet person. I like alone time. So I would spend a lot of time, honestly, like I said, creating. But this was an opportunity, you know, the quiet time led into using my creativity. There, were, there was time for me, yes, we had our... Um, responsibilities around the house but at the same time we had a lot of freedom to be able to kind of do what we pleased in our day and that included shutting my door and spending time writing spending time um, creating spending alone time so I knew how to be alone and I enjoyed it what I will say is the quiet time for me has always been important but I didn't start moving back into that world probably until about five, six, seven years ago, I was full of the idea of having to be the social butterfly, of being the one um, that was always engaged with others. I'm one of those where I'm kind of in between extrovert, introvert, which is really difficult at times for those of you that are, you know that. Um, but needless to say, what I found myself doing less and less of is having those quiet times that I truly needed. So my child is saying to me, well, is it any wonder you felt like that and you don't have time for any of this other stuff because you need the quiet time and the space to be able to create, to be able to see the detail and to be able to play. And so this has been such a powerful, powerful process for me that I wanted to share this with you today. So what then you can do is as you go through this process, again, this isn't necessarily one and done. I mean, I hope you take this and really use it moving forward because it's going to help you in your adult journey, in your awakening journey. It's going to help you create that joy again, continue to build that beautiful frequency and vibration and bring that of the child back into you as the adult. Don't abandon your child any longer. And we're all on different levels of abandoning, abandoning our, our child. So this is the process that I have used that has been incredibly powerful. Again, I'm just in the middle of this. You're going to find as you go through this that some of these things naturally happen probably during your awakening, the reclaiming. But what's real important during this journey is as these things naturally start to happen, when the mind connects with the understanding of what's going on and why it's happening and it's connected to the abandoning of the child or ignoring the things the child did because guess what? It's foolish ways. It's childhood ways or whatever it is. You know, you conform to society and you moved on in that way and now you're in this box and you're traveling down this tunnel and you've lost all of that. Detail, play, creativity, quiet time in my circumstance. Well, guess what? Now, now we're here to reclaim those pieces of us. 
That's how we're supposed to live, is with that kind of balance. And to be able to have that joy, that spontaneity, that creativity, that imagination, because guess what? That's how we're going to create our future moving forward. That is how it's going to happen. Not just individually, but collectively. So, I hope you've enjoyed this today. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Carolyn, I'm a channel, I'm a distance energy healer, and I'm a spiritual awakening mentor. And I offer these channels for your awakening and ascension and your life journey. So I hope you've enjoyed this today. Check out purplerainhealing.com. The link is below in the description box. I have all my services where I can work with you one-on-one -on -one to help you through your awakening and ascension and your life journey, whether you choose an individual session of energy healing and or channeled messages, or if you wish to work with me on a regular basis with my one-on-one -on -one mentoring, where I channel in all of my services and give you practical advice to help you move forward in your journey. Again, I hope you've enjoyed this. You take something away, and I wish you well on your journey forward in December as we shore up our foundation for the new year. Thank you so much for joining me in this video.